Hello everybody, this is Mike, KD2KOG, part of the technical support staff at strplay.com. I've got another video for you guys. This one is showcasing some of the plug-in functionality that has been introduced starting from version 1.4 of STR Uno. STR Uno's plugin system allows the development of a wide variety of plugins. Some will be developed by us. Indeed, we have already released three plugins at the launch of STR Uno 1.4 and some have already been developed by third-party developers, and I'm sure there will be many, many more plugins that come from the community. If you're interested in developing your own plugins for STR Uno, I'll display the relevant information at the end of this video. One of the plugins that we have provided at the launch of STR Uno version 1.4 is the DX Cluster plugin. This plugin shows some of the sorts of annotations that can be added to the main SP display. For those of you that are not familiar with what a DX Cluster is, it is a worldwide interconnected network of servers that allow licensed amateur radio operators a central hub to send and receive DX spots. A DX spot is a record of when a contact from one amateur radio operator to another is made. This is logged on a server so that every other amateur radio operator logged into one of the DX cluster networks can see when and where the DX spot was made. By displaying this information in real time on the SDR Uno main SP display, you can easily see where successful contacts have been made recently on the band you're currently visualizing. I also want to uh, inform you guys that the server will store DX spots across all bands, but we will only see the spots that are logged within the frequency limits of our main SP display. Now we can easily change bands while the DX cluster plugin is running and then see any spots that are within the new band. Earlier I said that the DX cluster system is used by licensed amateur radio operators. Indeed, you will need a valid call sign uh, put into this plugin for it to work. If you're not a licensed amateur radio operator, I found a website, and I'll put a link in the description, uh, that will enable you to obtain a call sign for shortwave listening, uh, which you can use in this plugin. So all the shortwave listeners, uh, you can get a valid call sign and and put it into the plugin and it will enable it to work. So let's have a look at some of the key features of this plugin. When you save a workspace in STR Uno, the plugin will get notified of a workspace save event and will have the opportunity to store the plugin on screen coordinates in STR Uno's INI file. The next time you start the plugin, it will appear as part of the saved workspace layout. The other parameters within the DX cluster plugin can also be stored in STR Uno's INI file by pressing the save button. The save values and settings are then used the next time the plugin is started. Let's have a look at those settings in more detail. As I mentioned before, a valid call sign is required for the system to work. If you use your call sign in another DX cluster tool, you need to add an extension to the call sign used in this plugin. This keeps the call sign unique for each system it's used in. The extension is just a dash followed by an integer value added to uh, the end of your call sign. Uh, it's not important what the extension value is as long as it's unique. The cluster field requires a valid host name and port number for the DX cluster you're trying to connect to. This entry must be in the form of a host name, colon, and port number. You will find the range of DX cluster telnet servers online or you may have one recommended to you. We provide a default entry if you don't have the details for one. The timer field contains the amount of minutes that the DX spot will stay visible for. This timer starts from the moment that the DX spot is added to the Telnet server, not from the time that it's displayed in the main SP display. This timer is specific to each spot. The label baseline indicates at what DBM value the lowest DX spot call sign will be displayed. All DX spots that are either on the same frequency or nearby frequencies will be raised up to avoid text overlapping. The label color can be changed between the predefined colors. This affects both call sign text and associated lines and markers. The start button becomes a stop button when the button is pressed. Stopping the plugin allows the parameters I've just explained to be changed. This concludes our short demonstration of the DX cluster plugin. As promised, here's the information for those that want to develop plugins on their own. We have a GitHub repository where you'll find documentation, a template of a plugin for you to use as a starting point, and relevant included files required to build a plugin. The plugin language is C++ and we use Visual Studio to prepare, build, and test template code. If you have any questions or comments about this video, DX clusters, or the SDR Uno plugin system, please leave them in the comments. I answer all questions and comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and 73.